that's in your ass! Right, folks, here's the Dead Rising review. The first game, the first game in the series. And I've got a bit of history with this because it's like... It's the first sort of big open world zombie game that I really played. There had been other ones in and around that time. I think I kind of remember, do you know that? When it comes to zombie games, Dead Rising was really one of the big first ones for me. You had Left for Dead as well, but I'm sure that came after. And it was one of the big Xbox 360 exclusives. You're like getting a fucking zombie game set in a shopping centre. This is like Dawn of the Dead. This was mind blowing stuff. And I do remember getting it and remembering how difficult it actually was and going, mm, I don't know if I like this or not. But I persevered and eventually I'd finished the game, sort of, kinda. And the ending for me was a bit shit. I get captured and. The game just sort of finished and I thought, you know what, I can't be asked playing that again, but I was wrong because I am playing it again right now. This is a remaster. Basically what they've done is given it a 60 FPS to 1080p coat of paint. Nothing else has been upgraded and that's fine because it, it looks it looks alright. It looks like a PS2 game, but it did when it came out anyway as well, so it wasn't this. Oh my god, that looks like such a great graphical Fucking monumental shift and change now. Where uh, Dead Rising excelled was its sheer amount of dead people on screen at the one time. And that is actually still very impressive today, and it's gory. The gore is fucking brilliant. It's like when you shoot somebody's napper off, you're like, fucking yes. See you later, alligator. Your melons went splat like a rancid potato. Oh shit. Right, so you go Frankie Boy West, who is a wank with a really disgusted looking face. It's like, well, it's everybody in this game just looks fucking weird. They look like they're made out of putty, and that putty has melted slightly. So you get this, she's huge descended fucking mouths, it's like, <laughs> like a fucking hippo, especially the guy in the helicopter at the beginning when he's flying you into Willamette. It's like, what the fuck, man? You could fit like 800 melons in that gub of yours. And Frank, you're no much better. You should be fucking chinning these zombies and fucking hit them in the head with the chin and the fucking head would... <laughs> so in your, in your descent into this town that's been besieged, but we don't know what it is, but it's zombies, right? We don't know what it is at the time. And then you get to take photos, and that's a big thing in the game's photo taking. So you get your PP, that's how I get my PP big. My big PP, PP leads to prizes. Lots of PP prizes. The great thing I like about this game is see when you die, like say you're level 10 and you snuff it. You can reload your game at a, a save, or you can go back to the start, but you take everything with you. So. Unless you're like level 30 or something like that, it doesn't really benefit you going back that far. Unless you've got no choice because you haven't saved your game like a complete fucking dafty. It's always worth going back to the beginning. It's a good way to level up and you can just fucking farm your, lev your levels. It's good, it's a good way. You can get some of the shops early enough if you know where they all are, like the, the gun shop, before Cletus shows up and fucks you up. Man, he's a, he's a prick. What a fanny. And you can just ransack it for like rifles and shotguns and it's good. It's good that way, but you need to know the game beforehand. So this really is just a big sandbox playground in a shopping centre and you go to the shops and you can change your clothes, you can use bowling balls and Yeah, you got light you get toy lightsabers, so they don't do anything but it's still fun to pick up a lightsaber and just smack them with this plastic thing and get a, get a sore face. You'll be able to get guns off of the uh, fallen coppers. I don't know why there's so many police in the shopping centre. They're just they're fucking everywhere. The thing with the items is, is the respawn, so... When you do run out of bullets for a particular weapon, if you found a secret beast stash, you can go back later on and fucking get it back. It's cracking that, I thought that was great fun. But it's hard, the game's hard as fuck. It's like a Dark Souls game, before everyone started coining that. Is it as hard as Dark Souls? You know, it's probably harder, but at the same time, you can stack your progression, go back to the beginning, but it's easier, and start out again. And taking photos gets you more PP. 
And the more PP you have, the more well things you get. You get a few annoying early quests, like the one with Kent. Kent is what I like to call cunt. Asshole. And he'll give you photo challenges, but you need to do all sorts of photo challenges before he'll give you the actual fucking quest. But he's just a, he's just an annoying bastard, I'm sorry, he's a prick. Okay, here comes the next one, Frankie. But first, feast your eyes on my work. Now this is my most emotionally moving shot. <laughs> now this is my sexiest shot. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, okay. This is my most violent shot. Check it out. Ugh. Okay, here's the deal, Frankie. You gotta go out there and take even better pictures than the ones I just showed you. You think you can handle that, huh? Yeah. And then after a while, like there's a day and night cycle, when it hits night time, the zombies will become more powerful. And the first time that happens in each playthrough, like going back to the beginning, it's basically you start again. So each time you start again, or if your first playthrough, you get a wee cutscene and I'm changing. And then you'll be able to pick up the wasps off them when you kill them. And that'll kill, like, ten in a, in a sort of radius vicinity to yourself, which is cool. Handy, so there's always there's always benefits to having slightly more difficult enemies. One of the boss fights is uh, quite early on in the game, and you're fighting convicts, and I just I didn't like it because it respawns. They respawn every fucking day, and it happens three times. I've recently come to learn that it's a glitch in the game. Fucking hell! So I hope they fix it for this one, but I kind of doubt it. I think. They've probably done the bare minimum to actually, you know, port this. I mean, they should have ported it as a pack. They did digitally, but they didn't do it when it came with the physical releases. Very annoying, very annoying. So this being as popular as it was, spawned three sequels and two sort of mini offshoots centered around Dead Rising 2. That'd be Case Zero and Case West, which you can still get. Uh, but if you're on Xbox, you can get them. Or if you're on PS3, you can get them, but you're going to have to suffer the shite frame rates, I'm afraid. There was also another um, version of Dead Rising 2 called Off the Record. And everybody sort of complained about why is Frank West knowing this one? Why are we going this dick with a fucking shite haircut and a motorbike? Chuck Green, or whatever his fucking name is. Charles Green! It's like, does the Capcom do that from time to time? They did it in Resident Evil, with Resident Evil 2, two different characters. Kind of irritating because you can just get used get used to a certain character type and then gone. And you get used to another one. I suppose it's good for like if you want to take a gamble with the series a wee bit and you don't necessarily want to involve the original cast and you go, well that didn't really work out. Well, we'll bring the original cast back and we'll make it work the first one. Didn't happen right enough, thankfully. You have to do all sorts of things, not just boss fights, but you'll have to get like survivors. And these these are optional things. Much like the the photos are mostly optional. The, uh, the survivors are optional as well, but it's always worth it because you get some amount of PP. You get a lot of PP in this game. There's a lot of wee wee, a lot of PP. I'm just, it's just flying out of the show. I'm surprised the game's not got a fucking yellow tint to it. Big PP tint. PP, they could. Pff, Jesus fuck, man. They could have come up with something better than that. PP, like, jobby. Just like, give you me your jobby points. And we'll upgrade your fucking toilet. You can save in the game, but you have to do it in certain specific locations. Being like a toilet, or the bench, up in the fucking uh, staff room at the security bit when you first start. Where Frank will go to sleep with whatever gun he's holding. Kind of funny. Kind of silly. Then the cheesiness is part of the appeal in this game. So aye, that's, that's, my, that's my review of Dead Rising. It's a good game. It is showing its age. The controls aren't the best. That's probably the worst part of the game is this, the, the finickiness of just everyday movement, really. But it feels okay for a minute and then all of a sudden it's like, I can't pick this gun up because you need to wait for 
trying to reorientate himself next to this item and the item has to sort of flash up so you know you can differentiate between what items you're picking up. It's annoying as fuck but it's a, it's a fun wee game so see you later. Your dad stinks of farts. Alright folks, how's it going? Back once again with a crack of bar. We're going to talk about Dead Rising 2 Case Zero. It was a game that was, well, I say game. It's two hours long, if, if that. You could probably finish it in about 20 minutes. Maybe not that quick, but... It's a game that released just ahead of the release of the big release, which was Dead Rising 2. And it was like a taster. A wee snifter of the game, cost money, cost a couple of quid. I was it three ninety nine or something like that. This was back in the day when Microsoft used points rather than pounds, so it was it was eight hundred points or four hundred and fifty points. I don't know, that's about three and a half quid I think. And they released this as a wee marketing tool, never really caught on. There was another uh, standalone DLC released for Dead Rising 2, which was called Case West. Because Frank West was in it and Chuck Green's in it. So the story of this is Chuck Green and his daughter Katie have landed in this wee toon, zombified everywhere, the wee lassie's bitten and they need zombrex. And then you need to build a bike to escape a toon to go to another toon that's watching with zombies. And we call that town not Las Vegas because it's called Fortune City but it's not Las Vegas because Las Vegas already suffered a zombie outbreak. How don't you just set it in Las Vegas then? Surely you could have done that. Surely. It's a video game. You could have recreated Las Vegas instead of making up this fake Las Vegas right next to fucking Las Vegas. That doesn't make any sense, does it? No, it doesn't. Unless Fortune City is in Las Vegas. Aye, let's just get on with a picture there. So, if you've never played Dead Rising before, why not? Open world, choppy choppy zombie game. Obviously this isn't the first one. This is the second one. It's not even the second It was a bridge. It's a, it's a, a, a gap stop or a stop gapper between 2, 1 and 2, so you can sort of, like I say, get the flavour of the game. And it's good, it's good fun. I don't know how much it is now, I'd maybe get it and, well, you're paying a couple of quid for it. It's only really worth waiting for the sale. If you want to get it, just fucking get it. So I couldn't about this tiny wee town, it's totally. I thought it was bigger than it was. I just, I've never explored all of it either, because, well, there is a lot of buildings you can and a lot you cannot go into. Highly irritating shit. Some of the missions will be like, oh, you need, to, you need to get the help of these wallopers, and one of them's got like a, a, a handlebar set of handlebars for a bike, and he's like, oh, I need my fucking, I need, I need that handlebar, mate. Gonna give you that handlebar. I got a shotgun. No, go and get me a broadsword. You know, mate, I've got a fucking shotgun. Nah, what a broadsword. See these fucking games, man. I don't know. Make them make sense to me, please. So I like, kill you fucking right, I'll fucking away and get this broadsword for you and then I fell off the roof and died. It was quite funny. I was like, oh I'm just gonna jump to the next building. Oh splish. Dead. Now you can I think you get checkpoints you can reload or you can start again. If you start again, you know, all the other things that you've built up till that point are still with you, so it's kinda roguelike ish. Sorta. Of. There's, there's a deeper sense of progression in this and, and I prefer it personally. It's um it's 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 not as annoying as a roguelike, it's not as annoying as say Returnal where you get like fucking 800 levels in and you die and you go all the way back to the start and all your fucking stuff's taken off you 
Nah, that can piss off. That is fucking so irritating. So fucking mind numbingly boring playing the same bastard level over and over and over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> you get a point. Pish! I hate it. So this is backwards compatibility mode on the Xbox Series Lynx, but it's the same for every Xbox One console, so go nuts. One of the annoying things was that Capcom remastered these, sort of, and then they put them out in the Xbox One and PS4, but then they package in any of these two standalone thingies. Why not? Oh, I tell you why not, how much a fucking tight arse is that's why. Most companies that I know when it comes to remastering a collection of games, they'll give you the collection of games and they'll sell them one by one by one. Of course, it's a Japanese company and it thinks in Japanese 1990-90 terms, doesn't it? 1990 90 1990-90-90! 90 thinks in those fucking terms. Well, 20 quid each, it wasn't the, the biggest of big deals, but... Can we just put it as a pack? You did digitally, you wanks, but not physically, you wanks. So they kind of did it, but they kind of fucked over people like me. I didn't have to buy it again right enough, but I'm still like, I'm going to complain, right? I like to complain. So that's this that's, that's game in a fucking nutshell. It's tiny, it's short, it's gory, and you'll probably have a laugh playing it. Not much more to say. Good night. Alright, how's it going? Well, um, talk about some Dead Rising 2 then, eh? Fucking hell, I need to get my breath back after that. Jesus, wet. Man, what was that thinking? Not a lot, like I normally do. Alright, so Dead Rising 2, set in Fortune City, Nevada, I think. I don't know why they just didn't set it in Las Vegas. Because they even talk about Las Vegas having a zombie outbreak. Why make up a wee tune that's just like Las Vegas when there is Las Vegas? When they talk about Las Vegas, I don't get it. I don't understand. Maybe it was a, I don't know, a fucking power constraint of the old machines that they couldn't quite get Las Vegas to look quite right. And they thought, oh, we'll just have to make this up. So you play the part of uh, this game as Chuck Green. He's a motorsport type guy who's taking part in this game show about murdering zombies. Can you murder zombies? I already did. Killing zombies then, right? Well, no, no murder, and that's no, that's no, that's a fucking, that's a, that's a legal term. That's not quite right. When you're legally dead, you can't murder legally dead people. I suppose it'd actually be desecration at the very, very, very least. But anyway, so they get on these bikes, they get chainsaws stuck to the sides of them, and then they, you just get points and you win. It was a piece of piss. It's like, oh, Chuck won. I won like fucking, I like twenty thousand points, and everybody else like three or four. It wasn't a contest, it was a piece of fucking piss. And then he, he he goes to find his daughter who's infected. Katie, her name is. 
And oh, hell breaks loose and the zombies get out because I've got hundreds of live zombies, hundreds of live undead zombies, just casually behind some fucking roller shutter doors. You know what? Whose idea was this? And of course, somebody lets them out, and then you see it in the CCTV, and I'm like, oh, he was dressed up like Chuck Green. I was like, it must have been him then, I. Because he's going to fucking blow that place up and trap himself and I thought, No! People are so fucking stupid. So if you've played the first Dead Rising game, you really know what to expect when it comes to this one. Because they're pretty much identical. The only difference is you don't take photos in this. You get combo cards for making combination weapons. And here is where the game starts to slide ever so slightly into Saints Row territory. I think it's a bit stupid, but... I liked it at the same time because it was fresh, fun and stuff. Now even when this game came out, it didn't run that well in the 360. I didn't play the PS3 version because, well, I had a 360, so why would I? And you're cutting about this place called Fortune City and you're, you're looking for Zombrex and that's always like a sort of reoccurring mission. Everything's timed, I never mentioned that in the first Dead Rising reviews, that all your missions are time based. Which is a bit annoying. It's fine, really, but you get plenty of time. Sometimes you don't get a lot of time. It's like, what the fuck? How's this in the red already? That's just the way the cookie crumbles into it, like a big fucking shit biscuit. So the military are coming in and they're going to shoot everybody, I think. And then it's like, oh, you fucking bastard. And then they'll fucking, you get some other mutated things towards the end of the game. And it's good fun, but it's really more of the same, only with slight differences. Slight differences. You can even befriend a fucking tiger called Snowflake, but you need to feed it something, some kind of meat. And you can get chunks of meat and you just throw it at its feet and it um, um, noms them enough. You've done that a few times, you've got your very own fucking pet tiger. I remember Walking Dead did that though. No, no. That was shite, man. That prick Ezekiel's got his own pet tiger and it's like it only attacks the bad guys. Get the fuck. It's a fucking tiger. Attack everybody. Starving, probably. Never mind. Shite. Tigers, animals. No. What? But aye, the, the bosses are as irritating as ever. Some of them are fucking hard, man. It's just. It's not even difficult, is it? You know what you're doing? You're just fucking irritated. Because there's. You get stun locked and then you get knocked over with the slightest brush of damage and. It takes him about half an hour to get back up and you can just end up getting stun locked to fucking death. That was a problem with the first one. And it's still a problem here. What? Sort it out, you fucking lily livered pricks. But the whole world's quite uh, nice to explore. It's nice to fucking chop zombies to bits. All kinds of mad combo weapons. You get your spike bats and... You got a boxing glove and you got a bow knife, you can make these sort of Wolverine type bladed gloves. It's good. It's good fun, it's funny. There's even a lightsaber, you got a fucking torch, get some gems and you no, you get an actual fucking lightsaber. This is what I mean but it start to slide into fucking Saints Row territory. That's the kind of shit they'd pull. Maybe not now right enough, but back in the day, Saints Row 3 and 4. Right, over the top to the fucking nth degree and the series is going down that way in this game, put it that way. Doesn't make it a bad thing, but if you're sort of pining for the sort of grounded in reality even slightly, even though you can, you know, you can heal a bullet wound in the first game by drinking a fucking jug of orange juice, but if only life was that simple. Eh? Or a fucking, or drinking your, your jugs of coffee creamer. Oh, I couldn't think of anything bloody worse. Just be careful when you're raiding the bins in this game because you could end up getting spoiled food. Now, there should be a, a, a certain air of fucking, you know, common sense when it comes to things like, if it says spoiled food and your hamburger's green, you, you wouldn't eat it, would you? And if you do, you actually lose a bar of life and you're sick of the place. It's not, uh, it's not worth it. The cocktails have come back so you can mix your drinks and get different effects. The, the bees are back for the destruction of... The zombies in mass. Like I say, it's just it's just made of the same as slight differences. They've just tweaked it a wee bit, the controls are a bit tighter and a bit better. Just slight tweaks, slight differences, slight changes. Different character. 
controls pretty much the same, but they tighten that control. There's no cameras anymore, unless you buy Dead Rising 2 off the record, which was um, just a rehash of this game with Frank West. It really should have been very, very cheap DLC, but it got it so disc release. Like, oh, this is this new version of Dead Rising 2. I don't want the new version of Dead Rising 2. Just fucking make Dead Rising 3, what do you think about? Or at least release this as like a five of DLC. Because it's, like, it's the same game when you play Frank fucking West. Way hey! You look fucking. What? I don't. Nah, I don't get it either. Didn't make any sense to me, and I'm no fucking reviewing that one because I don't have it. Actually, I might have it, but I don't have the new version of it. So I'm not playing the 360 one because I don't think it works in backwards compatibility. It might, it might, no, I don't know. I'll need, I'll need to double check that, I'll need to fucking dive deep. So you get all your prick dickhead characters that you think and you can see the betrayals coming a fucking mile off. Which is a bit annoying but... What are you gonna do and you get your, your daft fucking side quests like... Uh, helping a drunk stripper get to the safe house. Alright, that's, that's different, it seems like a waste of time, but she's perfectly safe where she is when you find her, so that, but you have to pad these games up with something, don't you? Absolutely. Once again, every time you reload an area, all your items that you had before respawn, so it's good, so you never really should run out of weapons. And you'll never run out of zombies either, because they all respawn too, and it's just, boom, fuck you, dead. You can actually lose the main story in this, but continue playing it if you want. You just continue playing the game, the the main story's over, you don't get any more quests, but you just, you're left to run around Fortune City, and it's a good way to lay, learn the lay of the land, because you can just explore to your heart's content. But I don't like doing that, I don't like losing a game. Fuck that. Same thing applies if you die, and you want to continue, load your most recent save, or you can start the whole thing again at the level you are at. And that's how I'm level 14 and 12 at the beginning of this, this game, that's how. Because this was an old save, I thought I haven't played it in a while, I'll just fucking restart it. Hi, so that's that's the that's the review, that's the, the thoughts in a nutshell. It's, it's more Dead Rising, battering. It's just slightly bigger, slightly better controls, and there's no photo taken. Now, there's combo weapons. That's really the whack of the changes. You still need to rescue people, the AI still sucks. Maybe it's slightly better. The boss fights are still fucking hard and annoying. Super duper. Alright, hope you enjoyed this stuff, catch us all. Later! Maybe you just don't know how to handle the tight curves. What? We just didn't start it, people! The carnage is just beginning! So right now, let me hear you make some noise! Looks good. Let's go.
Hello you itchy assholes. how's it going? Welcome back to another review and today Dead Rising 2 Case West The second and last standalone expansion for Dead Rising 2 Standalone meaning uh, you can play it without having to own the full game of course Smashing, <laughs> brilliant, it's no bad, it's about 4 hours to 5 hours long Maybe shorter, maybe longer depending how good you are and it centres around Chucky Boy and Frankie Boy taking down a Phenotrans facility. Phenotrans being the wallopers that are making this zombie excure. And why don't you get chipped and all that? So that's all the conspiracy theory swap and arms. Fucking, see, their, their conditioning is to take the chip in video games, mate. The, the, the fucking go is taking it in the game, so you'll need to take it in real life. We're just getting used to the idea, no? I know. Not a farty panty chance, motherfucker. Away and get yourself a sandwich and chill the fuck out. You're getting as bad as these fucking. What you call it? Flat Earth Wallopers. <laughs> a Flat Earth Walloper. It's quite a f small facility you're in, and it reminds me of like, the facility in the original Resident Evil movie. When you go down stairs and you're in this sort of hive type thing. I don't it just remind me of that, right? It's got 11 quarters and it's got a canteen and it's got fucking laboratories and. I wouldn't be surprised if it was uh, fashioned after that because it just that's what it reminds me of, okay. But it's not the biggest of play areas, but there's still tons to do. I still had an absolute riot of a time playing it, it was good fun. One of my favourite new weapons that they've got in this game is the Impact Armor. Basically I think Power Fist for Fallout, basically what that is. So when you first get in, you're cutting about Everything's going to shake because there's zombies everywhere. That's your fault, probably. So Frank's man his big story because he's a reporter and he's infected because you see him stabbing his neck with a fucking Zombrex thingy and then obviously Chuck's wanting to free his name and become less of a walloper. Well that never happens. He's a grumpy looking bastard, isn't he? Looks like he's dying for a shite. I mean take your face for a shite, you wank. Yeah, you're, you're like a shite gale. And you'll get wee vehicles in the game, you'll get like wee buggies, and then you'll get segways, which is fucking funny. I don't know, I just found that hilarious. It's just so fucking stupid looking when you're cutting about in your segway, you know? Ha <laughs> ha. Fucking what? Boss battles. You'll eventually come across these guys with impact hammers, and then when you defeat them, they'll replace the guys with guns. You'll get guys walking about with shock fucking batons, like you know, what they had using the cattle. You're a pain in the ass because they can fucking stun lock you. And you're like, get the fuck. You're cooking my fucking vegetables here, you bastards. Obviously, you get extra PP and the PP is back. But what I didn't know is when you're Chuck, you can actually take photos. And you've always got Frank following you about like a Wally Doug. So if you want to be a bit of co op action, boom, somebody's going Frank, somebody's going Chucky boy. So eventually happens as you store about this place, you save some scientists. Some of them want to do fucking organ harvesting and I'm like, fuck's sake, I gonna fucking bring us a heart and a lover so I can sell them in the black market. I doofed that bastard, I fucking smashed her head in. So like, you get yourself too, fuck. You want me to help you steal a fucking organ, you fucking wank. The last boss is a wee bit underwhelming, I thought, because it's just a guy with double impact hammers and he's got three life bars for some reason, I just thought. Fucking pish. Then you've got this sort of fucking really sinister looking woman's like, I've developed a cure for the zombie outbreak. Ha 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 ha. You're a wanker. And you're gonna die a painful fucking death. But just know the new because you somehow managed to escape. Oh, okay. Ah, yeah, that's, that's good. The combo weapons are back again as you would expect them to be. You get there's something called the BFG, the big force gun or something like that, or the. the bilateral force gun, something like that, and then you can combine that with the impact armor for the, like, the sonic impact armor, which I never actually made, which is a bit, I'm a bit disappointed, as a scientist guy, so you need to combine these four things, you need to get a, a torch and gems to make a lightsaber, then you need to get a shock thingy and one of those BFG guns to create another type of lightning gun. Then you need to combine them to make this sort of supersonic fucking impact jobby hammer thing. It's, it's weird. I never made it because when I went back to sort of give them all my bits and pieces to make the weapon, they'd fucked off. So I thought, oh, that's charming, that, ain't it? Thanks for, um, thanks for showing me the way, you fucking walloper. 
it's just mere dead rising folks it's getting to getting to that point where this is all I'm going to be saying every fucking video luckily there's only two left so if you're not a big fan of dead rising you've not got long to go if you're a big fan of dead rising go and watch all these again eh? every day get me the views please Give me the views! I need the views! I need the subscriptions! Okay, right, uh, that'll be enough for this video, and I'll see you later. So this video comes sort of the heels of me doing my Crackdown 2 audio review, ha ha ha, this is Dead Rising 2 AFF ah, the record, and it's a wee bit of a waste actually, if, if I'm being perfectly honest, I, I do like it, but I'm confused as to why it exists as a single entity game release, disc release, and not just DLC for Dead Rising 2. The premise of this is, you go Frank West, during the Dead Rising 2 campaign, but you replace Chuck Green in a lot of the scenes. There are some new ones, you get to take photos again, you get to up that PP meter. <laughs> PP, Jesus Christ, really. Innuendos flying about like shite in a shoveling wind, going to the bin, or whatever, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I think Frank West looks quite fat in this game, it's like, you've piled on the pounds, fatty. But if you get the Xbox One and PS4 versions, you'll get, like, uh, bonus things. And I've turned my Frank West into what looks like the Terminator. Well, it's very strange. I, I don't... Why? Because it's fun. Because it's basically Saints Row before Saints Row became Saints Row, do you know what I mean? And it plays exactly the same as Dead Rising 2. Only, like I said, you get to take lots of photographs. Mmm, wonderful photos in HD. Runs really well though, apart from the cutscenes. Cutscenes can be jittery and look a bit low res. I'm like, what the fucking hell? Oh, yeah, I'm fucking, looks like somebody smeared shite over my fucking screen. What the hell is this? Keek. Anyway. And if you die, you get to restart your story or restart from a checkpoint, which is lovely. Oh, I like restarting the story though because you get to keep all your stuff that you've got before and you get to start again so that's why I've got about like $300,000 if you want to make money in this game just beat up the slot machines don't play them get a lead pipe batter fuck at them do the same with the cash machines you'll see them, they're wee green boxes with lights on them or so I should say a screen, a green screen batter fuck at them get about 5 grand a pop then you can go back to your safe house and it uh, resets everything, like uh, in a Dead Rising, uh, Dead Island, Borderlands type of way. It's wonderful, it's wonderful at that, you know, it's wonderful, you gotta fucking play it, you gotta fucking love it and you gotta bash zombies heads in. The, um, the survivors can be a bit annoying though because I've turned my back on one and then, oh, dead, and you're like, what the fuck? So like, run, run, move, run, 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 and they just run in circles and die. It's just wonderful. It doesn't happen too often, but it happens often enough to be a fucking problem. Then I'm like, oh, that one died. Did I restart the game? No, I'll keep going and I end up getting killed anyway. So. It's a tough wee game, this. It's no, it's not as easy as you would think, you know? It's fucking hard. It's like, it's like Dark Souls before Dark Souls became popular. And it's got these, like... Roguelite-isms, when you die, you go back to start the game, and you keep everything that you've earned, your levels, your moves, your money. Not your items, though, like, if, you get, if you've had any weaponry, obviously that won't come with you, but everything else does. Can't be looking like a cyborg. What a fucking idiot, man. That is one of the charms of the game, is you get a cut about looking like a fucking idiot, man. That's, well, that's not why I play it, but it certainly helps. And if you want to live out all your, uh, you know, George Romero, Dawn of the Dead fantasies, you can do that just quite the thing here. 
Sometimes the auto arrow that tells you where you're going sends you in a wee bit of a wild goose chase though. I was heading towards this knife shop, getting these two dumb asses that keep getting killed because they're thick as shit. And it told me to go upstairs and come straight back down again. I thought, what the fuck was the point in that? There's also a sandbox mode now. I recommend playing sandbox mode because you'll get to get the lay of the land and not have any stresses of time limits. Because, to be honest, the game is just one ginormous time limit and I find that very stressful. And I'm not always in the mood for that shite. That's why I loved and hated the Dead Rising series. Even up to the fourth one, there's still time time limits for bosses and you can miss them. And Time limits and missions. Time limits are fucking nonsense because they're usually arbitrary shite. You need to get here in 30 seconds. Why? <laughs> because it's a video game. Stop that crap. Right, I've had enough. Fuck off there. Now, you're probably all getting a bit wary of the Dead Rising videos, so while uh, this will be the second last one, you'll be thrilled to know. And this is Dead Rising 3, let's talk about Dead Rising 3! Yeah, wallopers. Now, this is a Dead Rising you'll probably never see in anything else other than Xbox and PC, because I'm pretty sure Microsoft stumped up some of the cash, the way that Sony did for the um, Street Fighter V. So you'll never see that in any other system, but let's face it, Street Fighter V gives a fuck shite. And funnily enough, there's some Street Fighter themed DLC for uh, Dead Rising 3. No, I don't own it, so I won't be reviewing the DLC. Just to be fucking clear, you understand. <laughs> Just to be clear, there'll be no DLC for this getting reviewed, or 4, because, well, 4's DLC's absolute dog shit, but that's, uh, yeah. And the first thing you're going to notice with Dead Rising 3 is it's Fucking realistic looking compared to the cartoony games of yore. It's grim dark as fuck, and I remember when this was first shown, people were all concerned that oh, it's, it's Dead Rising and down a more gritty avenue like The Last of Us, and they're like, ah, no, here's a guy in a shark costume killing cunts. You're like, ah, okay, fair enough. Although I wouldn't mind a grittier reboot of Dead Rising at this point because. Well, it's, it's getting to it got to Saints Row territory with the second game. I felt. And it just keeps sliding and slides even further, and you, you'll see what I mean. As fun as I think the games are, they do tend to lose their identity towards this one and the last one, which is a fucking damn shame. Actually, it's more Dead Rising 4. Let's see, this one's actually really good. This is my favourite of the series. 
I love Dead Rising 3 and I'll always stand by it being um, one of the best open world zombie games you can get. Not just because I'm a massive zombie fanatic as you've probably figured out by now. But uh, yeah, it's a great game and I highly recommend it so I'll get into the reasons as to why. It's the first Dead Rising that's actually not inside a single complex. It's not set inside a shopping centre or a casino come fucking shopping centre come hotel. This is set in a city, is it? Now, I think this city's called Los Peradidos. You know what? Fucking hell, what a name. Los Peradidos. Sounds like it should be in Mexico, not America, but maybe this is in Mexico. I don't fucking know. And you go this mechanic guy called Nick Ramos. Or Ramos, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce these names, to be honest with you. I just. I think it's Ramos it will be, and he's um, he's trying to find his way out the city I suppose. I can't remember if he's looking for anybody or not. Christ, this is a great review into it. What's the game about? Some walloper that's trying to escape the city. But really, what else do you fucking need? One of the best changes this game had was the fact that you now no longer need to run back to our construction table bench to make your combo weapons. Thank you. Fuck man, that's just, yes, thank you, what a pain in the arse that was, especially when you've got timed missions and you need to run, where's the nearest one, oh but it's more realistic, it's a zombie game, there is no real realism as, as such, do you know what I mean, but I know what you mean, it, 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 did, it did add something to it, it just padded out the length of the game, you know, artificially, oh, where's the nearest fucking construction bench? You know, you've got a, what, like a fucking pack of duct tape nails and a fucking baseball bat and he's like put through a million nails into this fucking baseball bat in about three seconds. It's like, your realism kind of gets thrown out the window there, doesn't it? Or if you can make a cocktail that'll make you run faster and that is just ridiculous looking. You're like fucking Sonic the Hedgehog or you're like Chuck Green on speed. Now, you don't need to have played any of the previous games to get the best out of this one. There are characters in this game from previous iterations, but it's not necessary to play them because they're not really in it much and it's towards the end. So that's cool, it's got a whole new bevy of fucking characters. And yeah, that's that go nuts, you're in a city this time. But what I'd love to see in Dead Rising going forward from number four is reboot the fucker. Get rid of Frank West because he's a walloper. He's just a walloper. I just don't think he's a likable character. I don't really like Chuck Green either because he looks like his face needs a shite. And Frank West just looks like a cocky motherfucker, you know what I mean? He's like, I'm the super bestest motherfucker in the man. You look, like, get the fuck. You're a sleazeball reporter. Piss off. You probably made fucking numerous amounts of fucking spelling mistakes. And you probably embellished and lied, you prick. And you'll have other things to do in the open world other than just kill zombies and make weapons. And you can find tragic ends to people who are like, oh, fucking hell, people that top themselves and things like that, or people that get overrun and munched by zombies. It's quite good, I quite like that actually. Then you've got wee statues to find, which is a bit bizarre. And you've got like, other things you can find out through the map. The ZDC speakers to destroy and whatnot. Those are propaganda speakers. Get chipped! Get chipped and stop the fucking zombie plague! You look fucking hell. It's conspiracy theories would have a fucking field day with that shit, wouldn't they? And I've got a whole new upgrade system in this game and you get points and you can choose where the points go rather than just randomly getting fucking Oh, skill upgrade or oh, inventory upgrade, you look. You can choose all that shit now. And you can pick up books, like the other games to enhance shit. I always go for like melee first, melee and uh, melee, inventory and health, the three that I kind of go for first. Because the, picking the melee one will increase the durability of your weapons. And that's always good, and that just irritates me, durability. Especially at the start when you've barely done anything, and you get like a fucking crowbar and you hit something three times and it snaps. You know, it's a crowbar, it's solid metal, and you're hitting it against meat and bone, it's not going to snap. Even after a thousand wax, that wouldn't they snap? Because it needs something denser and harder than itself to actually damage it, I'd imagine. I don't know. Maybe I'm talking shite. I usually talk shite though, don't I? That's part of my ever-loving charm, you wank. <laughs> What's up, Doc? 
Ma Willy. Actually, that's a lie. It's placid. Flaccid, flaccid, placid, placid, flaccid, flaccid, flaccid. Yeah, shut up. What a fucking idiot. Anyway, dead rising. Free, baby! You've got combo cars as well this time, which you can make all kind of manner of fucking weird shit. You know, like, what was it? Like, fucking combine a tractor with a fucking moped and you've got a tank. You know, it's like the A-Team. It is literally like the fucking A-Team. They should have marketed it like the A-Team. This is the undead A-Team game. Mate, people would have fucking clamoured for that. Had four main characters, all wallopers. One called, rather than calling him Hannibal, you could call him Cannibal. Because, you know, zombies eating each other. That's clever, that's fucking... Why didn't they think of that, silly pricks? So you're cutting about this fucking place. The psychopath missions, or boss fights rather, aren't as annoying. There's a couple. There's one with a really big fat woman in a fucking restaurant and she's in like this sort of fucking scooter. That moped thing, and it, aye, she's a fucking pain in the arse. She eventually gets fucking walloped though, but she can go fast as fuck and end up running you over. Some of them are weird, there's like a sort of Shen Chi like motherfucker in this garden, and he just fucking goes mad at you. It's good, they're, they're good fun though. The first one you fight is a guy in a fucking bike. You fight, fight all his biker pals first. The controls for the vehicles are a little bit slidey and a wee bit, uh, could be better. But, it's, it's not terrible, it's functional, it'll do. The way that the, you deal with the fucking survivors is different as well. Some of them will follow you. You can go to your, like, once you've unlocked a survivor, you'll usually get like a safe house and you can just select which ones you want to come about here and you can just deselect them. It's kind of funny when you do that, you give them a weapon, deselect them from the menu, they disappear and you just see the weapon fall onto the ground, it's weird. It's like something out of a fucking movie, like a cartoon. I quite like it though, it's funny. And some of the, the survivors, you'll just clear the zombies around about them and they'll bugger off and leave you a wee... I'll be surprised, or sometimes I'll leave you fucking nothing. There's also challenges cutting about the place, but I'm not, I'm not a big fan of these timed things. You get 70 kills in 30 seconds, you'll like, don't even bother doing that at the beginning of the game, because it takes that long to kill in it, and it really isn't worth it. Leave those challenges to later. You'll have more fun. I, I like the world a lot better in this one than any other ones. It's just It, it just looks so grim. It's like Fallout almost, it's all grey and dingy and everything's on fire and there's fucking zombies everywhere. And you'll see real time damage on these zombies as well. Brilliant, love all that shit. You'll hack bits off them, hack their arms off, chip off parts of their fucking torso. You'll see their ribs and all that, it's just... Mate, they look great. And they'll, but they'll spawn, they'll spawn out of buildings and you'll see them fawn out of... Like windies and you'll see them climbing out of storm drains and things like that. That's how they repopulate the world with zombies. They're just a never ending churning out of fucking dead people. Which is kind of bizarre when you notice that, but you need to have something to do in this. Otherwise, dead world. Or city. Yes, you do get your time missions, but they're not as egregious as the ones in the previous titles. I always find time games to be very, very uh, stressful not always what I'm, I'm after. I like to have the option. I wish every game should just have you a, like, an option. Do you want to play in easy mode? Yes. Do you want to take all the time missions and just make them infinite? Yes. So you can get to all of them. You know, just do what you want to do. Play the game the way you want it to be played. Nah, we get gatekeeping elitism to deal with and that. that that's, can't be doing that. So, it is a bit different from previous Dead Risings. I think it's probably the best of both worlds. I hope, um, if you have played it, you enjoyed it. And if you haven't, that's, that sucks, quite frankly. But I think it's time for Dead Rising to make a triumphant return. Triumphant return of the dead motherfuckers. Don't know who I would get to make it. I know it's a Capcom property, but maybe they're not necessarily the best people to make these things. They'd probably end up doing a fucking Resident Evil 7 and just making that a boring trudge. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll shuffle off and drink my coffee now and play with my cat. And I'll uh, see you all in the next one. Bye bye!
Alright, Epic Fartles, how's it going? This is the last Dead Rising review for a good long time, probably forever, because I don't think we'll ever see another Dead Rising game. Because we know what Capcom are like and all these punters. All these fucking punters! So it's the last Dead Rising, this is Dead Rising 4. Rantings, ravings, jobbings, whatever. I don't know what I'll do after this. Maybe this will be the end. Maybe this will be the last video I ever fucking do. Wouldn't that be smashing? Who am I kidding? I'm addicted to editing! Like fucking... A weirdo addicted to Fanny, I don't know. So we'll talk about uh, Dead Rising 4 in just a minute. After these gimped messages. I heard a funny thing the other day, something called Disco Fanny, it was regarding a smell, anyway, I think this game's got a bit of that going on now actually to be honest with you, I've been playing it and I enjoyed it the first time but I'm not enjoying it the same, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm kind of sick of these fucking games to be honest with you, see when you, you don't have the three or four year gap between each game, yeah you can really see how fucking similar they are, how watered down and fucking simplified they've all got and look the the way they deal with the survivors in this game and you don't actually escort anybody anymore, not even kid on, you don't even joke, they just turn up. They're standing on top of something like a kiosk or a car or a truck or a mountain a jobby and then you have to kill all the zombies around about them and then they fucking run off. But then if you go away for a wee while and come back, they're there again. And you, you can only save 15 of them, so see when whatever particular fucking shelter's full. Just don't fucking bother them with these pricks. They, they, they don't even fucking have the, the decency to stop the event from happening. It just continues going on and on and on and on. Now, there's reasons why Dead Rising 4 turned out the way it was. Thingy Montreal, Capcom Montreal. We're sort of doing a sort of a more gritty Dead Rising game, slower. And Capcom saw it and went, "No, scrap that push." So they scrapped it, started from the beginning. Didn't have the same amount of time, probably a couple of years or something like that, and then shoved Dead Rising Four out the door. Um, boom, boom, fake. Are you fucking joking me? See, when it comes to Capcom's fucking games failing, it's actually Capcom's fault 99% of the fucking time. It happened with DMC Devil May Cry when Ninja Theory took it over. And they're like, well, we'll make it like the old ones, and Capcom are like, no, reboot it, make it all edgy and weird. So they did, and everybody fucking hated it. And then a lot of, I don't know, I just, you know, that Capcom sometimes really don't know what people want. They don't know what their customers are after. Look at Bionic Commando, I liked that game right enough, I enjoyed it. But it's just a, it's another fucking Capcomism, fucking shove it out to somebody else, and then when they, they make it similar to what we've had before, you complain, what? Then you well, let's make Resident Evil, but we don't really know who we're aiming at, at anymore, because since 4 it's really been not Resident Evil at all, has it? And that's only gotten worse. So you go fucking Walloper Frank, I almost said Frank Castle there. Frank, Frank West, Frank West, East, North and South, wank, and he's actually somehow started to look a lot more like Bruce Campbell in his old age, and sound like him. They recast him for some fucking reason because the other guy was 
too old or something, I don't know, even though Frank's like in his 50s now. And, I, and then you go back to Willamette, so it's not even, you can't even get that right either. Like, we'll just set it back where the first game was. Why? Oh, because people know what Willamette is, you know, fuck off. How is that town back to normal when its entire inhabitants not that long ago was wiped the fuck out? Who are you going to convince to move back there when it was a zombie holocaust site? And you want to move there? The real estate's really cheap. Your rent will be like a dollar a month. I mean, maybe got the homeless folk in there or something, I don't know. And they've built the world's biggest shopping centre. You look, know, aye, very good. Who cares? And it all goes to shite, because of course it does. And then the military are involved, and then there's like super zombies, and then there's like fucking mech suits. And I'm, I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Why are there fucking mech suits? Well, they're no mech suits, they're like fucking, you know, like super duper fucking mech suits. Aye, the Aye, them! And you can walk up to like fucking ice cream trucks, and then all of a sudden, this mech suit will morph into fucking Optimus Prime's ball bag and fucking start shooting icicle jizz at its fucking forehead. It's crap. It is really fucking crap. And it's like, why did you make this like Saints Row? I know it was ridiculous, but there was always a sort of sense of weightiness to the, the fucking Dead Rising games. There was always there was a sense of realism, a sense. A sense. But now it's just balls to the wall. And I don't know why they bothered to do that. I still think it's a mostly enjoyable game though, but if you're really hoping for Dead Rising to return to its roots, well, it's been binned at the now, so you're not going to be getting another one for a long fucking time. Wish I'd done the same with Resident Evil, to be quite honest with you. Just bend the fucking thing and start it again. Suck it all. Suck it all, man. It's fucking... Do you know what? It's all shite. The characters are shite. The fucking places you go to are shite. Even the enemies look like shite. I'm sick of it. Fucking done. Your video games now are bish. Well, praise Capcom for Devil May Cry 5, though. Everyone loved it. I haven't played it yet. I played the demo, that was it. And you play this and you're like, fucking happened. It's like, oh, we'll blame fucking Capcom Montreal. No, it was Capcom Japan that fucked this up. Because what Capcom Montreal were going to do sounded good. Sounded like a nice wee fresh shake up of what the fucking series needed. No, I would say that the, the originals are, they've got action moments in them, but they're, they're no fucking, they're no Saints Row level of action, no like this. But it's just like, it's like Dynasty Warriors at times, it's like, fuck it, What is going on? Why? It's a classic case of Capcom thinking they know what people want rather than actually listening to their customer base. And this is happening time and time again all through the industry. We want GTA 6, so what will we do? We'll release GTA 5 for a fucking third time. Technically a fourth time because it was on Xbox 360, then it came to Xbox One, PS4, then it came to PC, and now it's coming to Xbox, SX and PS5. This is its fourth fucking release, okay? Jesus fucking Joni Maka fucking Roni. And what have they been giving us? Have they been giving us any single player content? No. I could even have forgiven them if they'd been doing like single player offline expansion packs, but we've been getting We've been getting on this a casino in the online mode, and the online mode are full of hacking wankers. You know, everything really is turning to fucking poo poo. Nuke the fucking planet! I'm done, see you later. Hell of a team you've assembled. Coming up on Willamette. Capture or kill, your discretion. Thank you.
Why do you keep saying that? Oh, oh man, somebody broke your helicopter. There's that keen I've heard so much about. 